In this video, we are going to see the very basics of data manipulation and creation in R. To be our first hands-on experience in programming, and I really recommend that you try these comments by yourself in your own machine, in your, in your own environment, and try to experiment with the comments in order to get familiar and comfortable with them, because this will be an essential part of your experience as a programming. We have seen in the previous uh, lectures how to install R and then you should be able to get to this R console screen in which I am and it's important for you to have your reference card with you all the times because it will be a very valuable tool on getting comfortable with the comments I, I recommend that you highlight the comments that you most use and uh, you should be able to really understand that uh, documentation because in this tutorial we are not going to cover all the comments and you should be able to do it by yourself after. So first of all this is the R console screen and you can use R as a simple calculator for instance 2 plus 2 gives you the result in the next line after you press enter you can see that uh, there is always a, a number here which is the line number of the results this symbol here will always be here is just to show that a comment begins there and you can give more complicated expressions to to R to calculate and it always gives you the result in the next line mm. You can create expression using parentheses to separate the different the different comments. And the first comment that we are going to learn is the C comments. The C comment combines elements forming an array. So if I type C and all the comments have this same structure in R. It's the common name, open and close parentheses. This is because all comments are functions and we are going to see what does that mean in the specific functions lecture. And so you type the common name, open and close parentheses and the parameter that you want to pass to this function. So now I created just a an array with one single element. To create more elements you have to use the comma to separate the different parameters. So you can see here we can create as many elements as we want and you see it's possible to see here in the result that it's composed by many numbers. It's a single element composed by many numbers. and it's possible also to create let's say a list of names because some not always we want to store just numbers so but when dealing with names in R we have always to surround them with quotation marks because they are treated differently by the system we're going to learn th this is called a string and we are going to learn what being a string means but for instance here I can just type uh, let's say just a, a list of fruits and it returns here the each of them still with a quotation marks it's a single element composed by a list of fruits fruit names what if we need for instance to index a mat matrix and with an incrementing number so we can always ask to R using this symbol column to for an interval of numbers from hint from instance here from 1 to 50 and it automatically creates this list everything that we saw until now is not being stored anywhere it's just being shown to us as a straight result if we want to install these results to use them store these results to use them in other comments or whatsoever we need to attribute them to a variable. This is done with the equal symbol. So let's 
attribute to x the number 5 and it doesn't show any result because there is nothing to print but if we ask what is the value of 5 it tells me that it's 5 I can always use them in expressions for instance 5 plus 5 is equal 10 these variables are stored in your workspace your workspace is this it only exists while while your R is open it's possible to save the workspace it actually asks you to save the workspace when you try to close R but in my opinion it's not a very good practice to store too many variables in your workspace and the reason why is because sometimes you will end up storing variables there that you don't even remember that you are using and then you you run this code in another computer or in another environment and these variables are not there anymore and you can't even remember how you produce them so I recommend that all your programs be work work by themselves without requiring anything from your workspace so I just recommend that you don't save at all your work workspace when you use the command ls without any parameters it lists the actual variables that are stored in your workspace here we ha have only the x variable that we just created the next comment that we're going to, l to learn is the matrix comment as the name says it creates a matrix matrix and there is many possible arguments for a matrix. If you want to learn all them, you have to take a look in the documentation. But the first, first of them is the is the the first one is the elements that are going to compose this matrix. Then the number of rows and then the number of columns. So why am what am I requesting here? A matrix, right? filled with zeros with 20 rows and 5 columns here we can see that it created the, the matrix in the way I asked later on we are going to see more how arguments work for functions but this will be in the functions uh, class and I can always instead of passing just to fill the matrix with zeros I can ask the matrix to be filled with a different uh, numbers or with an interval. Like here, I'm asking for a matrix composed by one to forty, a matrix twenty by zero by two, and it it creates the matrix and then uses the the elements that I gave to fill the matrix. Uh, I can attribute this matrix to a variable let's use the variable x that we used before if I ask the value of x it tells me the same matrix that I just created um, let's say we create a matrix which is much bigger let's say 200 you can see that it's hard to visualize such a large data set for this purpose there is two com very useful commands in R which is head and tail head gives the beginning of a data set be it a list or a vector or whatever and tail gives the end of it you can see here the line numbers and that is just the end of the matrix and just the beginning of it we can always ask for more elements like I want the tail with 50, the 50 last elements and it returns the 50 last elements okay but let's say I want to manipulate this matrix so I can always request for a certain number of of elements selecting the elements is done in R by using the brackets so let's manipulate the variable R that X that we just created we let's say first of all the first parameter that I pass is the line number and the second is the column number so and if I omit it brings all of them so here I'm just requesting the first line and 
all the columns. You see, like there is three columns, it returns three zeros. Um, let's say we want to select a specific element, just the first element of the first line and the first column. Let's say we would like to select several elements from the several first lines. We can here pass an interval composed by uh, the C command that we learned before. Let's say we would like the first five lines. What if we want to change them? So let's say we want to change the first line of this matrix to 1, 2, 3. So we would first select the elements that we want. I want the first line and all the elements of it. Okay. Since this first li line is composed by three elements, I need to I need to assign to it a uh, array of the same size. So I need at least three elements to be able to assign it. So let's take a look in the head of our X matrix. And we can see here that it was attributed correctly. In the in the next video we are going to take a look in some other data manipulation comments. Thank you.